all these voices. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Pretty good. Good evening, Misfits, Sugar Ladies, and Demon Hunters. What's up, guys? On tonight's show, we have a very, very special guest. We are joined tonight by Mr. Sal Hernandez from STX Media. Um, you probably know him from Dread Time Stories. They have a brand new movie coming out deviant behavior how you doing sal pretty good how's everyone doing tonight um for the audience sal was kind enough to give me an old boy uh screener copies of deviant behavior so we've seen the movie before you guys have which makes us very lucky what i want to say about this movie first of all is wonderfully done man great 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 movie one thing I loved about this movie was it was just simply a beautiful movie. The cinematography was amazing. The way it was shot, I did not expect that at all out of a horror movie. I expect that out of like an artsy kind of movie that I'm not going to enjoy at all because I really don't like those kind of movies. But out of a horror movie, I didn't expect that at all. I mean, it was just a gorgeous, gorgeous movie the way it was shot. I love that. And then in the opening scene of this thing, man, I knew right from the very, like, First 30 seconds to a minute of the film, I was like, oh my God, I'm in for one hell of a ride because this is a weird, weird movie. But it was weird in a good way. It was like intentionally weird. It wasn't like awkward weird, like you were trying to do something else and it didn't work. It was just really well done. So I want to, seriously, I want to say congratulations. I like Dread Time Stories a great deal, but I love this film a lot more. It was very well done. Well, thank you. And I feel the same way. <laughs> I do like this a lot more than Dread Time Stories, and, you know, but. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited to hear that you, uh, you know, enjoyed and noticed the cinematography, uh, you know, and, and again, that was, uh, you know, designed by uh, Jacob, and, uh, you know, he had our assistant cinematographer, uh, Jacob Dollar, you know, they, they spent a lot of time uh, experimenting, and making sure that we captured the right look for the feeling of the particular scene, you know, uh, what we're trying to, you know, uh, cap capture the mood, you know, so to speak. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And, and one thing that also kind of caught me off guard on this movie is, in a way, and, and maybe you guys didn't intend this, but this is what I picked up from it also. In a way, this was almost a love story, too. But a very strange love story. Because I don't want to give too many spoilers, give too much away, because the movie's not out yet. But... Basically, you have two bad guys here, and there's a there's a connection between these two bad guys that is creepy as hell, obviously, but also 
almost kind of tender, which I didn't quite expect either. That was I don't know how the hell you guys pulled that off. You made me kind of like go, oh, isn't that nice? And I'm like, wait a minute, it's not nice. They're assholes. They're killing everybody. Yeah. It's not nice. But it, yeah. I, yeah, it was a cool, cool, cool idea, man. Cool, cool theme in a movie. Cool everything. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, you know, it, it you know, whenever, you know, I presented the script uh, or just the concept, you know, it was always this these strange looks I got, like, the fuck did you get that from? You know, I was like, I don't know, I'm just creating some weird shit, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of these relationships, not exactly like the ones that you're seeing, but, you know, I, I, I've, 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 uh, I've had friends or, or know of people with, with similar type types of, of interaction in relationships, you know what I mean? And they're, they, what I mean is like, I, I know people that have been in bad relationships and I've, I've been in some myself. So I kind of took those elements and brought them in and, uh, you know, and, and kind of put those in the film. So you see those, uh, you, know, you see sort of clearly huge exaggerations of, of those uh, of my own experiences within the relationship between Charlie and and, uh, and Roxy and uh, and the relationship between you know Walter and honey so uh, I, I you know I think that's interesting that you're that you're picking up on that you know it was uh, it, it was definitely something intentional uh, because we did want to have some natural chemistry uh, even between our killers you know so uh, yeah, and I and, and I know that there was uh, you know th uh, what and it was also intentional to leave question marks. So you know, there's a lot of uh, unanswered questions for a specific reason. So, uh, but that that was always the intention was just to leave the audience wanting more uh, of you know our characters. So, and see, that's something that you don't often see in in a horror movie. You know what I mean? You always have a plot. But usually it's a it's a fairly simplistic plot in most of these horror movies. But rarely do you ever have subplots, and you don't ever have subplots on top of subplots. And that's something I thought was really interesting and neat about this movie was that there were several different stories going on, several different relationships that actually had a little bit of depth. And I don't know, it was just interesting to see that. You don't normally see... This film, for the audience listening, you should definitely check this film out because not only was it... Uh, just a beautiful film and you just don't see that kind of cinematography in, in a horror movie usually it was i'm not kidding you when you see this you'll know it was gorgeous but also it had depth to it which is never in a horror movie anymore i mean horror movies nowadays man I, we, we did a show about this the other day where it's just they kind of let me down recently you know there's not that much out there that that i'm excited about anymore and this movie honestly got me excited again a little bit. I was like, oh my God, this is cool. Because it's just, I've never seen anything like it. It's different. You know what I mean? On so many different levels, the storyline is different. The relationships are different. The way it's shot is different. It's just, I don't know, it's so unique. And, and, and that makes it good in my eyes. It really does. I really think that you have something special here. And I'll tell you, I, I imagine, I, I know you, I've done shows with you before. I imagine you didn't spend a whole lot to make this you know, relative to what people normally spend. I cannot wait to see what happens when you have a couple million dollar budget to play with. Oh my God, you're going to blow me away. I know you are. <laughs> me too. Uh, I want $2 million uh, <laughs> to make a movie at least, you know, and that's probably chump change for these studio movies. But um, no, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, we, uh, you know, I, I uh, sold my house and had a little bit of money left over. And uh, so we were able to up the budget a little bit, but I mean, uh, if I had to give you a number, I'd probably say about five thousand dollars is what we spent to make this movie. So that blows my uh, mind, bro. I don't know how you can make what you made with five grand. That is amazing. Just I'm, I'm in awe, honestly, and not just for the show. Seriously, that blows me away. If I honestly, when I look at that movie, I think you I probably believe. spent quarter of a million, half a million at least, just because it looks so damn good. I don't know how you can do that on five grand. You're a miracle worker. What do you think of the movie, old boy? I I thought it was really good. I thought it was beautiful done, beautifully done. Um, cinema was awesome. The storyline was crazy. I like it though. I like that kind of stuff. Just to let you guys know, um, I thought it was awesome. The coloring, the music, and that that movie took more than five thousand dollars. Come on, man. No, that was, you know, maybe a, maybe a, you know. Uh, it, it 
you know, for for the specifics for the budget of the film, yeah, I mean, um, uh, we spent, uh, you know, a lot of the money was food, and uh, uh, you know, like we have, uh, fortunately, we're fortunate enough that uh, you know we have equipment, we have uh, a lot of good people involved that uh, you know know how to use that equipment and have vision, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not, I didn't, you know, I didn't make any money off this. Uh, yet hopefully we will right but uh you know everyone that was involved in this film uh basically worked for deferred payment um you know the uh the actors uh spread the script and believed in it so much and want to be part of it that you know they, they did they you know they said we don't we don't need any money of course we didn't have anything to offer at the time so we said this is the best we can do they said screw it you know i just want to do it um and uh, we spent some money, of course, bringing in some uh, some talent, uh, two horror icons, um, you know, Ed, Ed Gwynn, he plays the cattle truck driver at the end of the movie, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original film, and uh, John Dugan, uh, he, we brought him in, and he plays uh, Murphy, uh, John Dugan, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, played, played Grandpa in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so me being a big, big Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan, this was, this was huge for me, uh, second, you know, uh, you know, when John, I, I, I had met John at a convention and he was interested in working with me uh, on the convention level. But later on, when, you know, we, we, when we fleshed out this character, uh, we were thinking, well, who can we get to play it? And of course, I thought about John and John, you know, uh, later on, John told me like, you know, you know, man, I get a lot of shit scripts, uh, but this one's really good. I really want to do it. So uh, he even cut me a deal. Uh, you know, Ed, Ed, Ed read the script also. He's a friend and client as well. Uh, and he told me straight up to, he's like, look, I'm, you know, I'm a straight shooter. If it was something I didn't want to do or didn't like, I'd tell you. And he thought it was, it was a great script. And both of them are fairly, fairly impressed with what we did also. <laughs> you know, I guess with what they saw going on, you know, we're, we're, we're a pretty, fairly small crew. Um, but, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, I, I pride myself on being a good a whip cracker. You know, when I'm on, when, when uh, you know, we're on set. I make sure that we're organized and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know, um, gotta gotta be a diplomat once in a while. Uh, when problems arise. You know, we gotta solve then and there. Uh, you know, uh, when when someone ever asks me, you know, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, how do you how do you do it? I think the core of it all is just being organized and knowing what you're going to be doing for the day, uh, and not deterring from it and not screwing around. You know, and, and being respectful of just the time. Are you having trouble hearing me? Sorry. You're breaking no, 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 up no. a little bit, but we can hear oh, yeah, you're you just breaking up a little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah. you, you, you were going in and out. That's what I was trying to say without saying anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I don't do these interviews very often, so I apologize. I think well, the actors the actors did an amazing job, too. You know what I mean? That I, I really give kudos to, to the cast as well. Because usually, especially on a low-budget film, usually you have that monotone crappy acting that's just bad but there was no real bad acting that i saw in this movie honestly you know what i mean and i would tell you if i did because that's one of my pet peeves i can't stand that but i mean i think they did a good job and my favorite character believe it or not and you'll probably look at me like i'm a like i'm a weirdo when i say this or something but my favorite character was actually roxy i thought she huh? she knocked it out of the park man a beautiful woman great actors that scene where she's crying because the, the private detective screwed her over and said all that ignorant stuff that mm -hmm. was a good scene man and that that's not like the normal horror where you're like oh my god that was great he cut his head off whatever it was just a yeah. touching scene but it was so well done i mean she's a really good actress yeah she is Ta tanya's uh, phenomenal uh i think that's maybe her you know third movie uh she was in dread time stories actually uh she that was the first time you know, uh, I'd actually, uh, I was taking this PR class and I heard this voice, you know, and I thought that's an interesting voice. Like, I don't like, I, I'm, a, I'm big on accents for some reason. You know, when I hear someone's accent, I try to figure out where the hell is that guy from, you know? So when I heard her talking, asking a question, I it kind of like, who's, you know, who's that? So, and then, I, uh, you know, uh, at the time I, you know, I was single, but I didn't make the move. So, you know, <laughs> uh, but then, you know, a couple of years later in a different class, I was kind of just uh, shamefully promoting, you know, uh, you know, this casting call for Dread Time Stories. And she came up and and uh, she auditioned and she got the part. And then, of course, later on, when 
we did this film, we thought about her immediately. Um, but yeah, no, she's she's a phenomenal actress. She can she can take it there, and she can turn it off and on. You know, you don't need to do anything special or different. Uh, you know, you just tell her what you want, and and, and she does it. So, uh, and I, and I, and you're right. I mean, I, I'm very happy with how. Uh, everyone with, with 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 what everyone did, and, and as far as acting goes, and you know, to be honest with you, the motivation was from Dread Time stories. You know, like I said, we uh, you know a lot of reviews dinged us on the acting. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's a matter of taste. Uh, like I can see, I can see their positions, and, and and you know they have valid opinions. But we we that was part of our motivation was to make sure it's like, oh, this next film, they're not going to ding us for that. So, you know, we made sure that we, we got the best people we could and that we did everything we could so that they could provide, you know, the best performance possible. And I think we got it. So, you yeah, know, I'm very, I'm very happy with the acting as well. I actually liked the killer the most with the red hair. I thought that was, she was pretty crazy. I just liked, I, I felt bad to a point because there was a reason why she was doing it. And the guy was a douchebag. He was jacking off while he was watching her kill people. <laughs> yeah, he was just a typical rich guy, has money and he just likes to see that kind of... But the you could tell she was in... It's a love story, like James was saying earlier, because it really was. The lady, uh, what a, a man, whatever she is, is in love with this guy. And I don't want to give away too much, but that's why she's doing this stuff. And like I said, she has a bad side to her too, so it is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed the killer... And I thought it was a really, like I said to everybody, when this movie comes out I'll, in a couple months, you please buy it or go see it. It's a really great movie. If you guys like twisted, kind of, you know, disturbing kind of movies, but with a good, good, beautiful, beautiful Keller in the movie, beautiful cinema, and a decent, a really good storyline, see this movie. And it's really good. Sal really outdid himself this time. And I really have to say that. That he did really, you and Jacob did a good job, and I enjoyed the movie. Because usually, I'll be honest with you, I, I would have said something. Because trust me, I don't care. I, I've, I've said stuff to other people. So, but no, this movie was really good, and, and I really enjoyed it. And I sat because usually after like twenty minutes, I'll get bored. I sat there and watched the whole thing, and I was like, man, this doesn't even look like five thousand dollars. It looked like you spent like two, three hundred thousand on this movie or more. Just to, mm -hmm. it was really good picture work you guys did. It was really good, man. It is better than your first one. Your first one was good though for what you did with it, man. That was right. really great. But this was a really good, good movie, man. It's different than what you made before. Everybody's got to know that this is different. Yeah. So people, you know, if it, you, you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, it's it it, uh, you know, one one particular review which was actually a good motivator for us, and uh, you know, and we're not. And I want to give the impression that we 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 care about what people think in the sense of what the fans think, right? Because we're we're horror fans, so you know we're tired, you know, of the remakes and the reboots, you know, and then just sort of just recycling, you know, the same stuff over and over again, you know. Uh, uh, I, and again, I don't believe that it's it's a matter of you know, I don't know really. I mean, is it, did Hollywood run out of ideas, or are they just making sure that they're getting their money back? And I think it's the money thing. It's like, well, we know this franchise made money. Let's just reboot it you know we know that this movie made money let's just redo it over and over and over again uh, so as a horror fan we wanted to create something original and, and do something different um and uh so again we care about what the horror fans think now when the reviewers of course who you know may or may not be horror fans are just movie critics you know uh but we, we still take some of that criticism and, and try to run with it uh, not that it hurts our feelings entirely, you know, we still got egos and whatnot, and of course, I was like, well, I thought it was pretty good, but, uh, you know, one guy said, you know, I, I really want to see what these guys can do with the slasher movie, so, like, that was, uh, you know, that was sort of like, we need, we need a slasher movie, you know, just, that's a, that's a good idea, you know, I, I, you know, and of course, we ended up creating, you know, our, our, our character, Honey, uh, which was, uh, you know, the idea uh, I came up with the character. Actually, Honey was the basis, the core of the whole premise of deviant behavior. In 1999, uh, you know, I, I, I think I was at a Walmart or something after Halloween, and I found this uh, this cheap plain white mask, and I, and I had it. And uh, at the time, you know, I, I, I may have been or not been working. I don't remember. And I just had it, and I, I 
I like to be creative, so I just I I painted it, you know, with make what what would have been makeup, and I, I had created this mask. And I thought well, this would be interesting for a killer. Maybe. Very very interesting uh, to see the reactions and, and validating to some extent. You know, I just uh, I'm very proud of the work that everyone put in, and I'm glad that you guys really enjoyed it. You know. Uh, we're, yeah, we're we're not just saying that because you sent us a free copy and hey, you're on my show. <laughs> hey, yeah. By the way, you know, you know, people are gonna think you're just saying shit. So, no, we really enjoyed the movie. Trust me, James would have said something if he didn't like it. Um, it was really good and actually surprised him because trust me, we, we he's watched the movies and he's all yeah, uh, you, you know, but, you know, we, we're not gonna just sit there and say oh, yeah, but no, I really seriously really liked the movie. And I really can't wait uh, to what else you're going to have after this. I mean, what do you you guys have anything else that you might looking at to do? Well, we are uh, <clears throat> we're uh, we're lo we're looking to start like j maybe January. Uh, Dread Time Stories two. Uh, you know, yeah, we uh, we've kind of we've we've got a script going on. Um, you know, we just are looking uh, to you know just kind of fine tune it. And make sure that it, uh, you know, it it is it is, uh, you know, up to our standards. Because, like I said, we just, you know, that that's how we that's how we operate. We we one of us produces a good chunk of it, then we work on it together, and then we kind of kick it back and forth and really really talk about you know plot holes and like, well, that doesn't make sense. Because what about this or how about this is better, you know? Because um, that's one of our pet peeves within some independent movies is that you know it's like, well, do they even care? You know, <laughs> they just. He's over there now. He's got this. He's over here. He's got that shirt on now. It doesn't make sense anymore. But you know, minor details, right? To some people, but it, it, I really care about those details. So, um, but yeah, we're uh, and we're 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 gonna try to get um, outside funding for this one. So hopefully we can up up the uh, the budget a little bit more. And uh, you know, our, our our dream for this one is to bring in uh, a couple of other uh, horror icons, uh, people that you know we've always wanted to work with. Uh, so hopefully they, you know, we can bring those guys in and, and produce uh, qu some quality work. And, and that's something that Jacob and I have always strived that we're, you know, we're, we always say this to ourselves, like, well, we can't get any worse, you know, so, <laughs> you know, cause it's a matter of just not trying anymore, you know, I mean, so we just tell ourselves and we can only get better because we're learning. We're always learning. We're always open-minded and, you know, we're, we're not going to shut down uh, any kind of critique, you know, if, if everyone has a valid point and we'll take that. And, and, you know, if we can fix it somehow, we will. But, no, it, it is definitely, you know, this movie is definitely a, a few steps, uh, you know, higher than the Dread Time stories. So, uh, again, um, you know, right now, uh, so far we've shown the film. It's been accepted to a few film festivals. So we've, uh, we've shown in Atlanta, Days of the Dead. We, uh, let's see, we, we showed in uh, New Jersey, New Jersey Horror, Horror Convention and uh, Horror Film Festival. Um, we just got accepted to uh, Toxic Film Festival, which is an online uh, film festival. So look that up. If uh, I think June 10th is when it's going to be screened. So I think anyone in the world can basically, you know, as long, I think if you, you pay the fee or whatever just to get on, you can watch the movie there. Um, we're going to be screening. Cool. We're going to be screening in, uh, at the Cult Classic Convention uh, in Bastrop. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think in one theater they're going to be playing uh, Texas Chainsaw 1 and 2. And at the gas station, I don't know if you noticed, but the gas station in Bastrop was where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that, that scene took place. Roy Rose, uh, you know, bought the bought the land and refurbished and, re, re, uh, you know, redid the whole, the whole thing. And it looks just like, you know, like the old days. And we're going to be screening at the gas station, which is pretty cool if the convention ends. Um, we're also going to be, we got accepted to the San Antonio Horror, Horror Film Festival. Um, what I've been told is that we've been nominated for a slew of awards, so I'm waiting to hear back on what those are. And hopefully we'll come home with the chainsaw. They, they have these cool chainsaw awards. Uh, that, that'll be playing in, uh, I believe, the middle of October. So, uh, and like I said, we, we've got a lot of submissions out there, so we're just waiting to hear back. I really, I really do, as, as a horror fan, objectively, I, I think that a lot of horror fans would enjoy this film. Uh, it, it's interesting, one of the comparisons uh, that, that, that a couple of people, reviewers, have made is that this film is a crossover, kind of. Uh, they, they said it's like a detective noir film mixed in with a slasher film. 
and, I, and uh, someone even compared it, I mean, dare I say, Silence of the Lambs. I know what they meant. It's not Lost Silence of the Lambs, but I think that sort of, you know, that sort of, uh, you know, whodunits kind of cop kind of movie mixed in with a little horror. Um, and uh, I really didn't think about it until someone said that. So well, I guess it is, right? It's yeah. Um, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty decent. It was different. It had a different plot. It reminded me a lot of a lot of slasher movies. You know, a Sweet Alice, that, just the mask and everything mm -hmm. that came mm -hmm. that comes in mind. Um, you know, the what just any movie that has that, you know, with the mask and stuff. It does a little bit with the Silence of the Lambs just because he was investigating him. I see the point of it, it uh, that part of it. it. It was more like Manhunter, actually, if you want to, before yeah. Silence of the Lambs, the prequel. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I, I really enjoyed it. And maybe in Dread Time Stories, too, you can actually have one of our shows playing there while somebody's listening to it or something. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> but, you know, it's just throwing it out there. You know? It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what do you think, James? <laughs> one thing I thought was very, very interesting is how you get lost in the mask. You forget what's behind that mask. You know what I mean? Because there's a scene where the mask comes off. And it kind of shocked me, honestly. I, when, when that happened, I was like, oh, my God. Because when the mask comes off, it's like the face that you see makes Jason Voorhees look like he could win a beauty contest. I mean, it's not a, it's not a pretty picture. And you forget. And the, the mask goes back on, and you forget again very quickly the hideous thing that's underneath that mask. You start seeing the mask as the face again. It's, it's a weird mind trip that you go on, and I was amazed at, at how easily I found myself sucked into that, where I mm. just forgot that there's a hideous monster. Because there's almost a little bit of a sexuality about the character, you know what I mean? Not that I think the character is extremely sexy, because it's a freaky mask and it's a, it's a bulky guy, but it's like, I don't know, it's just this sensuality that's with the character, and you forget that there's a monster under there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that, to me, I don't know how you pulled that off, because... Once I saw that face, I thought, oh, my God. You know, it completely changed what I thought I was looking at. It com completely changed it. And then I found myself, in a, in a matter of just minutes, it's like I forgot that I saw it. Even though I knew I had seen the face, it didn't matter anymore. I was right back sucked into the mask again. And that was a very, very, very neat trick that you pulled off there. Because I don't know how you did that, but it was very cool. Because I I, I didn't I didn't look at, the, at, at her as a... As a, as a monster. You know what I mean? When I should have looked at her right. as a monster because that's what was underneath there. But for some reason, it just... I, I felt sorry for her still, even though she was a monster. It's weird. But it was really, really, really cool how you did that. Yep. Yeah, it... it uh, you know... It, I, I've, I always kind of thought that, you know, Honey was kind of in an ab abusive relationship. So maybe that's where some of the sympathy comes from, you know, where, you know, because Walter kind of, you know, tells her what to do and, you know, and you know, it's all, it's like an abusive relationship. You know, he kind of manhandles. You know, the the abuser will you know rough up the the spouse, and then after that, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean it. I love you. That sort of stuff. And it's this interesting twisted cycle. So I I, I kind of thought about a lot about that with uh, with Honey. Uh, you know, it's just to give you some backstory. You know, the, the you know we were trying to you know we we're deciding you know what is what does Honey look like under the mask, and. Um, you know, I'm a nail biter, so uh, it, uh, when I bite my nails, you know, I keep going because there's a snag and it's a little rough, so I keep biting and I keep biting and I keep biting until, you know, I hurt myself. That's what Honey does to her face, you know. She is constantly trying to make herself look beautiful, and she keeps cutting, keeps cutting, keeps cutting, and that's and what you see is what you saw, you know. Uh, so, and, and until she's ready to reveal that, she wears that mask. And the, the thing about that mask, and a lot of people on set, you know, were almost had the same, you know, confusion you did was, you know, it, it's actually a pretty, it's actually a, a pretty face. It is a very pretty face. And when the costume was on, a lot of the guys, you know, would admit they're like, I, I forgot that was a dude. I was totally checking him out, you know, so, <laughs> uh, you know, because, you know, uh, and there's video, we were watching video to do the, uh, you know, go to the documentary. And there was a scene of Honey standing there getting direction from Jacob and Jacob walks off camera and the sound guy's just you can see his eyes could have shift up and down like a guy would check out a girl you know it is hilarious and uh you know so 
yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think a lot, lot, a lot of that, you know, like I said, that sort of uh, confusion, uh, the good confusion, was uh, a lot with the mask, and I think, uh, you know, uh, the lighting and uh, the light, uh, the lighting of the mask also had had a lot of impact too. I think, uh, you know, it it it's, it set a lot of tone for what the actor was trying to do, and I, and I think. Uh, uh, I think LG did a good job exuding the character through through that mask. And see, the mask to me, is, the mask was one of those subplots I was talking about. And maybe mm -hmm. this wasn't intentional at all, but this is exactly what I picked up. I'll tell you, when I'm watching the movie, the mask to me symbolized what Honey wanted her ideal face to be. Like that mm -hmm. was her view of perfection. That's what she was trying to reach, but she could never get there. And I felt like she would forgo the mask completely once she reached that perfection level in her own mind. So th the mask was a substitute for the face that she wanted. That's what I felt as I watched it. And then I found myself also picking up on that abusive relationship you were talking about because I was rooting for Honey. I found myself <laughs> actually rooting for her. I'm like, just kill that dude. Screw him. You don't have to take that <laughs> from that guy. Just cut him up, man. You know what I mean? I found myself wanting her to kill him instead of kill uh -huh. the people she was wanting to kill. And I was like, good God, I mean, I've made this monster the underdog because she, yeah. she really was a sympathetic character, even though she was doing horrible things. It was really well written the way you did that. That's Thank not you. easy to pull off. <laughs> Thanks. And, and, and you're, you're spot on, you know, uh, was, is that, you know, that the mask is a placeholder for her. You know, mentally, but you know, we all know in reality she's never going to get there because she's going to keep cutting. You know, but that's the insanity of it all. And I, um, you know, and I, and I guess in some ways I was kind of, you know, making some sort of social commentary about you know women and and beauty, what it is to be beautiful nowadays, and what you know that that a lot of people do a lot of crazy stuff to their face uh, to meet a certain societal standard. You know, and in some respects she's kind of taken that and it's been completely twisted and, and perverted in her mind and it's become this you know this twisted this twisted individual uh, who's obviously got some issues right so yeah plenty of them and another thing is I liked about the movie is like he was saying the mask itself has a personality it's just like the one that's on my uh, screen right now of uh, you know V that, mm -hmm. that has, even if it doesn't move, it has expression, it, it works. Just like if you ever seen like the story we did with Slender Man, it doesn't have a face, but it does. It's kind of weird, it's hard to explain. And it was like I was watching a woman, and it was really crazy, because you're right, I was feeling like she's the underdog, and I was cheering for her, and I hate to say that, it, it, it more. I wish you would have killed the other dude too, because I thought he was, a, a, like I said, a douchebag. Mm -hmm. But it, you get that feeling, and at the beginning, when she's dancing around, she does have that mask. It's very beautiful, and with the red lips, and that's what she's trying to get. But she's, you know, she's distorted her face so much. But when she was dancing around with that music, and if people don't get it, that music, it's, it has that 70s beat, you know, the disco, and yeah. it fits perfect with a movie. And now, you know what? Honestly, that's a really good, good song you guys picked for that movie, for that yeah. part of it. I, I'll tell you, that, that sold me on the movie right at the beginning. It was just yeah. different. I'm like, hell yeah, this is really good. But I, that part's great. So I'm really glad you did that part. So, you know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, Eric Eric actually wrote that song specifically for the movie. You know, um, Eric's a talented musician, man. I mean, he's amazing. Um, you know, uh, I, I, you know, when we write music, I play producer with him too, and he appreciates it, uh, what he tells me, you know, uh, cause you know, like, you know, it, uh, artistic types in my mind, you know, like, like, like him, you know, they can keep going on and keep perfecting it. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. And I get to pull the reins in sometimes, but you know, we're a great team, but I, I just, I'm always in awe of that guy's talent. And, you know, when I told him the idea, uh, for that opening, uh, song, you know, uh, that was his inspiration. He's like, let's do a soundtrack. So I can write more songs. Like, okay, let's let's do more songs. And um, you know, so he he recorded the, a, a rough cut of that song, and I heard it. I'm like, that's it. You know, and uh, you know, he found uh, and I, I, you know, I forget the 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 lady's name that we uh, we hired. Uh, she sang the song for hundred bucks. You know, and that's that's who you hear. Um, she, uh, and she did an amazing job, also. But 
you know, I, I, I yep. You know, it's it's funny. You know, a lot of a lot of people will come out saying like, I "Can't get that fucking song out of my head." So I was like, "Good," you know. <laughs> Think of that song every time. It's true. I couldn't. I mean, seriously, I was sitting there singing that song today and yes, and yesterday. I'm like, damn, I can't get this damn song out of my mind. And and I was telling James when he watched it because he finally got to watch it in the morning. Mm-hmm. It, I said that song's gonna get to you, and he did. It did. That song's just it sticks out through everything else, and that that that's it. Just makes the movie. I think it was a good good thing you guys did putting that in there, and so. You know, I like I said, it was a really beautiful movie, and you guys get a chance. You're gonna, you know, don't look at it. Oh well, you know, it's too gr- disgusting. And no, there's a meaning to the movie. You know, there is going to be some disturbing parts of it, but I mean, it makes for the movie. It just, it's a very beautiful you done mu- movie, just like James has said. So I, I, I can't wait uh, till it comes out on Blu-ray, guys. Check it out, or whenever it comes out on movie, try to check it out at the. The film festivals and stuff like that because it was really well done and in his other movies are great too so check those out yeah i'm excited <laughs> that that there's a good soundtrack too you know what i mean that to me was cool because not only the the opening song that dance with me baby but there were several songs in the movie that that i really enjoyed listening to just the songs and they they fit where they were supposed to go and everything it was nice and uh sal was telling us before we went on air that the soundtrack is actually going to be available as well uh, to buy and for downloads and stuff. So I might have to pick that up as well because I, I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, right. yeah. The uh, you know we uh, when we had fi- when we decided we wanted to do a soundtrack, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know we, we threw that out the, to the distributor and the, the, our distributor actually has a uh, a music label branch, so it was perfect. Uh, so we were told that. Uh, the DVD, I think maybe the Blu-ray also, but the DVD for sure will have a CD of the soundtrack, you know. And of course, then the songs will be available for digital download uh, after the after the movie's released. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I you know, I, I know people are gonna listen, you know, to the songs and, and gonna want gonna want to you know, well, I, you know, I I I you know I, I I try to be objective about it, but these are really good songs, you know. <laughs> just like, you know, I was like, damn, they're really good songs, you know. So, and a lot of people say the same thing. Like, where can I get the, that song, you know? So, uh, if you guys are, are really interested, I'll, I'll I'll make sure you get uh, the MP3s of those those songs. Cool. Your, your final. I I think that song "Dance with Me, Baby." I think you're going to end up selling that to other movies. <laughs> I just have a feeling I think that's going to happen because it's just like it has that catchy feel, and I think that's going to get that that soundtrack is there. You guys are probably going to end up selling that song to a bigger movie. I don't know if you would do it, but I I, I see it happening. Somebody saying, "Well, I want to use that song because it would make sense because that movie that song's like the perfect song for a slasher killer gonna cut you up kind of thing mm-hmm. at the beginning." And it's I could I could see somebody like you know somebody like like you know somebody else trying to do that and buying that song so you might have something with that song that song too so but uh what i was telling so i was going to tell them an idea i have and this is something that it like i said i said it to somebody else um here's my idea was for a movie and and you don't have to do it one way or another it's about a killer who kidnaps you know his it's a, a woman it doesn't have to be a woman it could be a man either or um but he tortures this girl but the girl falls in love with him. It's crazy. Instead of him killing her, you know, like, he ends up falling in love with you. It becomes like a twisted love story. No one's ever done anything like that. Like, he kills people, but, like, he catches this chick. He wants to kill her, but he ends up loving her, and she falls in love with him. And it's got a twisted, it's like a twisted love story. And it was just an idea, and I gave it to the other person. They said it was, they never heard anything like that before. I've never seen a movie like that, ever. So I was just going to throw that as an idea out there one day. <laughs> yeah, I, just, uh, I can't think of anything that, uh, that, that thing comes to mind uh, that I can think of. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, See, no one's ever heard of anything of that. <laughs> yeah. We're really kind of thinking of like, you know, like the rooms and stuff. I just People start throwing ideas at me. I just start already thinking of stuff. But uh, no, it's pretty cool. I see a lot of pink yeah. in that for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you could probably throw a 
you could probably throw something crazy into that movie, but no, I'm just throwing it out there because like no one's got that. I've never seen a movie where the, the 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 person who's getting tortured falls in love with the person torturing them. I've never seen that, so never. So I mean, that's why I was saying something out there. It's a new idea. <laughs> cool. How about you, James? What do you think? Like I was saying earlier, I'd love to see what happens when when these guys have a big budget to work with. You know, I mean, I'm I am thoroughly impressed. I I, I enjoyed Dread Time <laughs> Stories. I really did. Um, this movie was just leaps and bounds above it. And it's not that Dread Time was bad. I didn't think that at all. I, I actually liked it. But this was... You got something special here, brother. I really believe that. And like I said earlier, to, to find out that you only spent five grand on this thing, I just... It baffles me. I don't know how, how you did it. And when you have a big budget to play with, I can't wait to see what you do. I mean, I can't wait to... I think you guys are going to be making movies basically as long as you want to. I honestly believe that because you guys are doing a hell of a job. I'm really impressed. Thank you. And, and <clears throat> you know, it's uh, it's funny you say, you know, we're going to make movies as long as we want to. Uh, you know, we've gotten to a great place in our lives, in our careers, that, you know, we can, uh, we can. You know, uh, it was early on, early in the year, we, we were contemplating doing a, uh, you know, some experimenting with some shorts, and if they turned out well enough, we were going to try to maybe do like a web series with them. And um, you know, this this uh, you know film student uh, new new to town found us and kind of you know wanted to set up a meeting, start talking to us. You know, uh, you know, it, it, he he started like kind of uh, disagreeing with us in a sense. Not that we know everything, but there was this sort of uh, you know. Uh, like I'm a film student, I know kind of stuff, and uh, he he was like, "Oh, you'll never sell that." I'm like, "Well, how do you know? You know, I don't. What have you sold?" So, uh, but my point was that I just finally to shut down the conversation. I said, "Look, you know, if we don't get money to make this, we're gonna do it anyway. It may not be as great or as grandiose as we wanted it to be because we don't have the money, but we're gonna be able to pull it off. You know." It, it, the, the money's never really going to stop us from, from making a movie, you know, uh, obviously budget will always help us, uh, you know, increase production value and do, you know, the, the effects that we want uh, and, and pay for the actors that we want. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, if we want to do something, we're going to be able to do it. And, and that, it's a beautiful thing that Jacob and I or anyone in the crew can come up with a premise and go, I really want to do this. And if everyone says, yeah, it's a great idea, you know, we'll go spend a, week, uh, a month of weekends and go and film this thing and maybe submit it to film festivals, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're moving along pretty well. Uh, in, uh, you know, there's the business side to this, obviously, and uh, we're doing pretty good. And, you know, the, the, the big dream is to be self-sufficient where, you know, we're, we're funding our own films and then they are, they are high budget films and, uh, you know, that we have a studio here in Corpus Christi, Texas. There's a lot of great talent down there. You know, I, I want STX Media to be the next new line, you know, new line yeah. started with Bob Shea selling movies out of the trunk of his car, you know, and, and this guy named Wes Craven came with a script of a movie that no one wanted to make. Bob Shea said, I'll make it. Uh, so they made Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, then after that, no one wanted to distribute it because they thought it was a dumb movie. So Bob Shea, Bob Shea said, "Fuck it, I'll distribute it because I've been doing it for years." So he got it out in theaters, and it was a huge success. So New Line Cinema became, you know, the house that Freddie built. And you know, fast forward, you know, I believe a couple years ago, New Line sold to Warner Brothers for almost a billion dollars. Um. I, I dream for STX to be at that caliber one day, to be uh, just, you know, self-sufficient, like I said. Um, I don't know, maybe Honey will be the house that built STX Media. Or, uh, well, you know, uh, Honey will be uh, the house that, uh, well, was ST, what was it say? STX will be the house that uh, Honey built. <laughs> so, that would be kind of cool. Hey, yeah. are you guys going to do a prequel with her? Are you going to do anything different? Are you going to have her come back or I don't know you know uh, we were uh, planning a prequel 
to kind of explain a lot of the relationships. Uh, but with time and the slate that we already have, you know, the actors that are supposed to be younger are going to be a lot older. So, um, you know, we were trying to figure out, well, how can we pull this off? And the only solution we could think of reasonably, because, you know, we can't afford to digitally make someone young, <laughs> uh, is uh, we'll do a sequel with flashbacks so that we'll still be able to uh, tell you how and uh, why these people got together and, you know, what's the origin of their relationship. So, uh, yeah, we are, we are planning a, a, a sequel. Uh, you know, uh, details are pending, of course, but, uh, you know, we thought with the reaction we're getting uh, for our villain uh, that, you know, we may have a franchise in our hands. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people... In fact, uh, someone's already asked me for... Uh, they want to know where they can buy the mask. Um, I think uh, that there's someone who made, like, custom pops. They wanted uh, full-body pictures of Honey so that they can make a pop, you know, so maybe, you know, there's something to it. I mean, we did, you know, I get a lot of thought into, you know, the costume. Uh, so, you know, maybe, there, you know, maybe one day people will be cosplaying honey, you know, like working with and something pretty funny and cool. <laughs> I think, I, I think be, you got something. I think it would be really cool to do a prequel, like a full prequel and set it earlier so that you can have different actors playing like, way younger versions you know what i mean yeah and have her like discovering the mask as a kid in a, in a halloween store or something and falling mm -hmm. in love with that mask and then as she learns to kill you know what i mean starts you know how serial killers always start with animals and, and stuff like that as she starts to kill each time she's going to kill she can't stand to look at what she's doing so she puts the mask on to hide her identity or something you could work something like that and make it really really interesting and and psychological and then you could do a full prequel and then you can have it lead up to where she meets the character. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Walter and everything. But you can do it, like, you can start it really from, from the beginning when she's a child, when she's first coming to grips with her sexuality, when she's first coming to grips with her, her desires and her need to kill. Uh, th there could be really something there. That would be very interesting to see. Yeah. Well, yep. Without giving away too much, um, you know, we, we allude that Walter is a doctor. And uh, his backstory is that he's a psychiatrist. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking how great that would be when you said doctor, if he was her shrink and he was trying yeah. to help her come. That would be amazing. Yeah, like I said, I don't want to get I don't want to give away too much because you know you know like I said, prequel, sequel, that kind of stuff. It's still up in the air. Understandable. But uh, there, you know, there there is uh, uh, like I said, he if anything, he, you know, um, the intention was that he is a psychiatrist. So there's there's lots of twists and turns with that in itself. Um, awesome. awesome. You know, in, in the sequel, you know, we want to address a little bit more of sort of, you know, the, we, we allude that, you know, why are the police, you know, sweeping this under the rug? Because clearly they know what's going on, right? So we, we're going to dive into that a little bit more and explain that why, you know, why is this continuing with no repercussions for, for our, uh, you know, for our villain, so. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if we go the route of uh, either a full prequel or a sequel, uh, I think a lot of people will have a lot of an uh, answers to their questions and we'll be that sort of like, oh, cool, all right, all right, fleshed it out a little bit, you know. So, uh, yeah, like I said, we, uh, you know, we, we are intending to, to pursue uh, other, you know, attachments, uh, sequel, prequels to this, to this particular uh you know, maybe create, like I said, maybe have our own little franchise with this thing, so. Yeah, I think you could, because that Honey character is fascinating, you know? And like I said, I can see that full prequel with her with her uh, whole rise to, to becoming a killer. That that would be very mm -hmm. interesting. I could see the, the doctor um, being like the brother of the governor or something and politically connect, connected, and that's why. I, mean, I can see all this. It's forming in my, I guess it's that writer's brain. It's all yeah. forming in there, and I'm like, oh, man, there's so many Very great angles you can go. <laughs> yeah, it, man, it, I can't wait. I'm, I'm actually, dude, I'm, I'm fully invested in this character. I love this character. I love this movie, and I can't wait to see more, bro. I hope. I really hope that you do make several more because I really enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah, well, we will. <laughs>
we will. Oh, yeah, we're shooting for it. We want you guys to do really well, and I think you can do something good with Honey. I think it's an awesome character, and um, it's something different. It's something that, you know, we can go on, you know, and I think it could be up there with a good franchise. It's going to get a little bit twisted, or I will say that. Yeah. That's, what, yeah, I, that's I, one I, thing uh, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that there have been, you know, plenty of uh, transvestite, you know, villains or killers, right? Uh, I just I could never I could never find anything as far as a full transgendered uh, female serial killer, you know. Uh, when we we're you know starting to shoot, in that was uh, that someone brought that up, and I was like, I don't know, that never, I, you know, I, you know, I was like, what about Buffalo Bill, you know, from Science of the Lambs? Like, well, he was he, you know, he was still a man, you know, and uh, Frank Inferter from Rocky Horror Picture Show. I was like, well, he's still a man, you know, but in this instance. You know, uh, it, he she's fully transitioned. Granted, it wasn't through conventional medical, uh, you know, uh, paths or ways, but uh, you know, she's she's in her it, she's physically, you know, trans. Uh, she's she's transformed, and uh, she was a man and now now a female. So, um, so when I talk about her, you know, I I, I do have to talk to her talk about her in that tense because she is a, a she now, <laughs> really, you know. The bits and pieces are in a jar now. So what, what I love about it too is even though she's a transgender, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. like you were trying to make some huge political statement. It wasn't like you were yeah. trying to make it out that because she's transgender, she's a monster or anything like that. The cool thing about this was it just was. You know what I mean? She that's mm -hmm. just what she was. It was just matter right. of fact. It wasn't like trying to be this big statement about how it's either right or wrong or, or any of that crap. It was just, this is what this person is, and that's just right. the way it is. I mean, there's nothing good or bad about it. It's just, this is the person. And, and you you stop, at least me personally, I stopped seeing her as a transgender person. I, mm -hmm. I saw her more as just a person. You know what I mean? Right. You, you feel yeah. that vulnerability, you see that weakness, and you see that, that sorrow and that rage, and the, the whole package. And you forget that it's, I mean, it's funny when you told that story about on set, they would check the person out and they forget because watching it, I forgot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't see it. Like in the beginning, you're like, okay, that's obviously not a woman because that's a dude. That's a big yeah. guy. <laughs> Look at him guns. You know what I mean? That can't yeah. be a woman. And, but then you kind of, you lose yourself in it. it. It's weird. You just do. And you forget. And you're like, you start seeing this character as a female and as right. a, as a, I don't want to say weak because there's nothing about Honey that's weak, but a vulnerable is a better word, a vulnerable character. And mm -hmm. you feel sorry and you almost want to protect her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like as a, as a viewer, you want to, to be the one that protects her. You want, I'll save you from that douche, man, that asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want yeah. to help. And that's, it's really well done. And I, I really enjoyed that, that aspect of it that, because you see transgender people in movies, but and you're starting to more and more as it becomes more of an issue in society. But it's always right. pushing some damn agenda. Everything's always got to be so political in our culture anymore. And I love the fact that instead of going that route, which you easily could have, but instead you were just like, okay, this is just what it is. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's yeah. not that I'm making a transgender character. It's that I've made this amazing character that just happens to be transgender. That's how it came <laughs> off to me. And that you're exactly right. You know, I'm not interested in, in uh, you know, I have my political views and, and they're my own and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, perf I don't do anything public with them, you know, uh, and I, I don't intend to do anything politically through film, really. Uh, I just, you know, and, and, and you hit it around the head. It, it is just, it's a character who just happens to be transgender. This movie is not a transgender movie or a, there's no political statement. Uh, I, you know, it's, neither here nor there for me uh either way but uh no you're, you're exactly right you know it is it's just an aspect uh, of the character and uh, you know it, it, I, I i still find it fascinating that you know it it's it, it, it's a it's more of an experiment i guess this turning for me it's like who's gonna who's gonna because there's still people who still don't know that it's a guy that played that that character uh some uh, there have been some people are like, who's the girl that, pl who's that big girl that you got to play that character? I was like, that's a dude, you know. It's a, it's a dude playing a girl who's playing a guy who used to, who's now a girl. 
<laughs> so I think that's uh, because of how, and, and I'm just going to say it. That's that's because of how masterfully that role was played, and that he did such a good job. He had even just the mannerisms of a female, and not only just the mannerisms, but like like when the guy is sitting there yelling at her, right? Mm -hmm. The way he would just dip his head slightly and that go into that submissive posture, right? That was amazing, man. That that conveyed the entire message and really gave that feel that it was a vulnerable female and not a guy that could probably kick the other dude's ass because he, he's a yeah. pretty stacked dude. I mean, he could probably yeah. beat his ass if he really wanted to, but that's not what you felt watching it. You felt like this is a vulnerable character, and you you honestly wanted to come to the rescue. You know, I felt the same way I feel when I watch on screen uh, domestic abuse happening where a guy is beating up a woman. How, how yeah. much that pisses me off, and I just want to go in there and slap the dude around. I felt that same way watching him yell at Honey and mistreat her because... That's the way, even though I could see with my eyes, I knew that it was a guy. And I guess I knew also, because I've done a show with you before where you explained it to me. Yeah. But I knew going in that it was a guy. But he did such a good job with the acting that I really was able to suspend disbelief and forget for a while. And the character was a female to me. Even though I knew the actor was a male, the character was 100% a female. And it was just a really, really really well acted role and I mean I think the whole cast like I said before did a great job and please uh, if you talk to these people please pass that on for me that they did a wonderful job I thoroughly enjoyed it just great it was really good oh, I will uh, of course you know we're gonna well, I, uh, I'm assuming you'll post this show uh, you know soon and we'll, we'll definitely you know put it on the page and stuff and tell everyone to check it out but I'll definitely pass along your sentiments and I really do appreciate them I think I think I agree with you I think the cast did a really good job you know, um, I think uh, LG uh, did a great job with Honey and, uh, you know, was able to exude a lot, you know, through a mask, you know, and I, I you know, that's, that's always been, uh, you know, at least for me, you know, you know, you always have these uh, people, at least it's supposed to be the studios, like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's just some kind of mask, but we get anyone to do it, right? But it's changed, you know, like, uh, uh, example was like Leatherface, you know, Gunnar Hansen, uh, what you know was asked to do part two. They didn't want to pay him nothing, you know, anything beyond scale, and uh, you know he wasn't interested in doing it. But they didn't care. They're like, let's get some other big guy to be in the mask. Well, the ch character changed. They did the same thing for part three and part four, you know. But uh, I think it takes a lot uh, for someone to be able to do that through a mask, you know, because you don't see their face at all. You don't see them smiling, making a, an angry face or whatnot. But uh, I. I it was almost as if in different shots, you know, someone asked us that too. It was like, you know, uh, how many masks did you use? And we only had three. We had two hero masks and then we had a stunt mask. Uh, but I, 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 after we spoke more, they thought that we used different masks uh, throughout the film in the sense of the lighting. And it was mostly the lighting. The lighting changed the face and almost created expression. Uh, throughout the film with the mask. So I thought that was interesting that people were picking up on that too. Uh, it, I gotta agree with that. It shows, it shows really what a spectacular actor he is. Honestly, because to be able to convey, and I mean there was all kinds of emotions that were conveyed from that character. And to be able to do that with a mask that the expression doesn't change on is mind-blowing. I mean, mm -hmm. I could feel, not just see, I could feel the different emotions that, that he was putting out. And it was really a great job of acting. I, I honestly believe that. And it's funny because we just, like I said, uh, not too long ago, did a show where we were talking about horror movies. And, man, we were ranting and bitching about how crappy horror movies have gotten and how terrible. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you are making us out to be complete liars here. Because here we are <laughs> talking about how great this movie is and how much we love it. And we were just bitching about how there were no good horror movies. But that was before we saw Deviant Behavior, man. I am thoroughly impressed. Thank you. Thank you. That goes for both of us. I really enjoyed it. Tell them the same thing from old boy. I enjoyed it. And maybe I can even have Honey on the show one time. That would be very interesting. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, uh L yeah, I enjoyed LG, it. LG is a, a whole other thing. So, um, yeah, yeah, you, it, you know, you can get him on. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's uh, yeah, it, it, he people take him or leaving. It's interesting. 
uh, it's a whole other thing, you know, like we, we actually have a whole section uh, of the documentary, sort of like people's experiences with him. Um, you know, he uh, apparently those, those uh, he, uh, he was in stilettos, uh, even though you only see it like once in the movie. And that added to some of the irritation. So I don't know what, what that was doing. Another thing, too, was like he couldn't breathe in the mask. Because uh, if he breathed in the mask, it sounded like Darth Vader. So for sound purposes, as soon as uh, Jacob yelled action, he had to hold his breath. So anytime you're seeing Honey on screen, the actor's holding his breath. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you don't yell. You know, typically, when you're an actor, when you don't you don't stop until the director says cut. So you know, he would pull his breath for longer until someone would yell cut. And, you know, pissed off about that, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you know he, he'd do the show. But uh, yeah, another thing too is uh, you know, as you're talking about you know, the performances, you know, again, Anya did a great job. You know, during that during that one scene, uh, one scene that stuck out with me at least for Eric. Or Charlie was the again I might be giving away too much was in the hallway when he's got that knife in his shoulder. Uh, I actually made a hole in my wall for that one. Uh, that, that that there's an actual hole in my wall because that was actually shot in my hallway <laughs> over here. But uh, yeah, Eric, Eric did a fantastic job. You know, it's funny. The original idea for the character was that he would uh, be smoking the entire the entire film. Uh, but Eric's got a, 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 a very acute allergy to smoke, so we had to figure out something else. Like, well, he just pops pills now, so he's just a pill popper and drinks a lot. So, but uh, yeah, he did a great job. That's kind of uh, funny that you you just you just basically said that that you filmed it in your hallway, and now you have a hole for the knife in your in your uh, wall in the hallway. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really it was it was super funny because uh, the idea was that. You know, the rig would hit a plank that we would hide strategically behind him, so it actually would make a hole in the wall. Well, the crew member that was supposed to be holding it, I suspect, was on his phone. I couldn't be sure, and the plank slipped away from uh, Eric. So when when the uh, the knife was pushed forward, it didn't hit the plank; it hit the wall. So at that point, it was kind of over. And at that, uh, and then I just said, "Fuck it!" So I, I got a hammer. You know, I pushed the, the knife all the way through, you know. Uh, my girlfriend was sick with the flu. She was in the other room while we were filming this movie, well, filming this scene, you know. So she comes out with this sort of face, and the entire crew were all males. They all turned away and, like, ran ran into, like, any kind of opening they could find. Uh, it was hilarious. They were more scared than I was. Um, but the, and, and they all just pointed at me, you know, like, he did it. So... Yeah, that's what uh, I was. That's what I was gonna ask you, cause like I know if that would have happened in my house, my wife would have kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna ask you if you got in trouble. It it was perfect timing because she was asleep and she was sick. So at that point, she didn't give a shit either. So uh, you know, uh, at that you know, it, it was perfect timing. And then uh, I think a few months later, I'm looking, I'm looking at the scene after it's been cut, and I'm like, wait a minute, where's the shot of the knife? you know, coming out of the wall, and we couldn't find it, and I was like, god damn it, we put a hole in my wall, I didn't get that shot, or they, we, or they lost it, so I, I, you know, we had to, we had to come back anyway to do a reshoot of actually showing the knife, you know, uh, penetrating the skin, so I said, screw it, I'll put the hole, I actually repaired the hole, I didn't paint it, but I repaired the hole, getting ready to paint it, but, uh, and then we came back and made a new hole, so in, uh, in, uh, in the hallway, there's like you know a knife, you know a knife hole, you know. But I don't know. I think it's like four inches long, quarter inch thick. It's all pink inside from fake blood. So, you know, but yeah. I don't know. Like one of these days, you know, if this movie is, you know, my in my dreams a cult classic. You know, there'll be people, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the hallway or the hole. You should put uh, a frame around it. That would be right? awesome. Put like a picture <laughs> frame around it. <laughs> that would be kind of awesome. Yeah, you should put like a frame and say this is where we did this movie with Honey. Yeah. This is, you know, and have a story back line to it. But that is pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't get uh, your ass ring by, by your girlfriend. But yeah, we all know how that goes. I, yeah, I think at that point it was never, uh, it was always kind of like everything was off the table or on the table. I don't know how to put it. Because... 
the entire the entire the killer's house is my house. Uh, the way it worked out was um, I just sold my house. Uh, my girlfriend had sold hers, and we you know we 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 got a house together, and. Um, I was already talking to this other guy about using his house, um, you know, for the killer's house. And uh, as we got closer to, it was like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever you want, whatever you want. And then it became to like, okay, well, like, give me some dates. And then it became, uh, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to do this anymore. So it, it started getting too flaky and too close to shoot, to you know, to filming. So I, I told, uh, you know, I told my girlfriend, I was like, look, I was like, if you know to make this as stressless as possible i think the answer is that we just film everything here you know uh you know we we ended up getting a you know a, a decent size enough house to kind of cheat uh you know the the actual size of the killer's house and uh so for eight months we moved in in may and i think by june or july we started filming, so we didn't really unpack until the following March. Not that March, but the following March, because it was eight months. So my house was the set. Yeah, that sounds pretty crazy. Yeah, that, you know, and it. So what, let me ask you a question. So when you made this in your in your house, mm -hmm. so you had that little room added on where he goes and watches his movies and stuff like that, or do you already have that built in your house? That that is actually uh, my office. That's actually my office. In fact, uh, if if I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna just, I may just ruin the illusion for you. Um, so you have, you know, Murphy's office. You know, John Dugan. Uh, you know, when when uh, Charlie breaks into the house and they have that sort of conversation. So that side that you saw is the same office. The opposite side that you don't see in the movie um, is a, a side that we we basically. You know that part, that was the beauty of just sort of the the space and having so many crew members, was that we were able to re, we did, we we pulled everything out, we redressed it. Um, you know, we we uh, oh, there's another thing. I don't know if you noticed, but those pictures on the wall, you know, of all those girls, um, we actually were able to convince a, a few girls to come in and let us take pictures of them. You know. <laughs> in their underwear. It was really interesting. Uh, it was the craziest sort of conversation I've ever had with anybody. It's like, would you mind, you know, coming over and getting down to your underwear and letting me hog tie you and take pictures of you on the dirty floor? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I, you have a friend who might be into Oh, yeah, I got a friend who was, okay, cool, bring him, you know. So we had a few girls uh, come over and that's what we did. It was the strangest thing. Of course, my girlfriend comes home and says, like, what are you doing? You know, like, it's for the movie. It's, just, it's not weird, I promise you. So we took a few hundred pictures. Uh, we got them printed up. And uh, we spent half a day pa wallpapering the walls with those pictures, you know. But I was actually, uh, you know, we actually, just like I said, we we're, were able to kind of uh, restage different parts of the house. Yeah, dude. Thank you very much, Sal. We love you. You're an awesome guy. I love your movies. Thank you for uh, giving us the time to, uh, you know, to talk to you right now. Is there any uh, shout outs you would like to give out? Well, uh, anyone who's listening, I, I really appreciate that you go uh, find us on Facebook, on uh, find STX Media on Facebook, like our page. Um, you know, we're a grassroots kind of uh, horror company. So, um, you know, obviously the fans are going to make us or break us. So uh, I'd appreciate it if anyone wants to kind of keep up with what we're doing and when we're going to be uh, maybe screening the film again or when we get a release date. You know, go to our page, just give us a like. We appreciate the support. Um, you can find us on Twitter. We're not very active, but we're getting there. Um, but uh, I'm very proud of our team. You know, we're we're uh, we're making uh, huge leaps and bounds uh, faster than I ever thought we would. You know, we're 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 just trying to you know, create something that we're not getting anymore as horror fans and just, you know, we're trying to just bring back yep. some originality back to the genre and, and you know, and, and fill that, that void that a lot of horror fans have, you know, with the, that, that's been created by this sort of remake, recycle, reboot, you know, uh, craze. Um, and I, I think at this point, you know, like I said, uh, you know, we are just going to have to do it ourselves. 
and uh you know we we can only do it with with the fans and like i said it with uh you know it, i'm glad you guys enjoyed the film and uh, i'm hoping everyone else does and i'm hoping that the, the word will, will spread and that uh you know we will actually have something pretty cool and continue with the franchise and our, you know and, and create more villains for you guys to fall in love with or sympathize or hate um so again i thank you guys for having me on i really appreciate the support you guys have been always been giving me you know uh, i'm glad to call you welcome friend. brother so uh thank you so much yeah bro you you definitely got got two friends here with with staring into the abyss with this show you're definitely a friend of the show and anytime you have something you want to promote you have a new movie coming out you're you're always welcome brother just just hit us up let us know you're always welcome to come on um if any of your actors want to come on or anything like that jacob's always welcome we love you guys and i'm i'm fully fully supporting sdx media I mean, I, I think you guys are great. And the thing that makes you special in my mind is not only are you really good at what you do, but you guys are horror fans just like we are. And so you understand what horror fans want to see. I think that's what makes the movie so special because you're not going to crank out the same corporate crap that everybody else is doing because you guys are real horror fans. So you really know what we all want to see. You, you know what's crap and what's good. You know what I mean? I think that's something that, that everybody needs to really understand is these guys are, are cranking them out, man. They're, they're working hard, and they're, they're regular guys like us. You know what I mean? They're horror fans, and they're, they're doing a great job. And you got 100% of my support. I'll definitely spread the word about the movie because I really, really enjoyed it. And anytime you or Jacob or, or any of the actors or actresses want to come on, you guys are always welcome, man. We got much love for you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I'll uh, I'll try to get as soon as the uh, the final mixes for the songs are done. I'll send them to you guys and maybe uh, you know we can have on Eric or something. Uh, like I said, he was sort of you know running the ship on that side, and uh, you know he loves to talk about music and sort of the motivation behind uh, the creation of those songs. And yeah, yeah, for sure, man, that'd be great. Appreciate that. Awesome, thank you, brother. Yeah, dude, you're always gonna have a, uh, fans with us, man. And um, I'm going to give a shout out to all our listeners. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Sal and Jacob at STM, uh, at ST, uh, sorry, STX Media. Sorry, I'm tired, guys. And they're wonderful movies. Dude, check them out. Um, love them. Uh, just all I can say to everybody is love your life. You only have one. And have a good night, Misfits, Sugar Ladies, and Demon Hunters. <laughs>